Marshall Giller, Head of Investment Research here at FX Primus, bringing you my market insights for January 14th. Well, Wednesday's better than expected China export data and three stable fixings for dollar yuan have allowed the markets to breathe a sigh of relief, at, like, at least for now. How long is it likely to last? Personally, I have my doubts about just how real the rebound in Chinese exports will be. Uh, there's a fairly strong seasonal pattern to Chinese exports. In this graph, the yellow line shows Chinese exports. You can see the spike that has occurred in the last few Decembers and Januaries. December has, uh, recently at least, been the strongest month of the year for exports. January has been even stronger than the previous December, but then over the year, it, the course of the year, it falls back before rising again into December. Over the last several years, it's managed to recover and be even higher by the end of the year, but of course, Past performance is no guarantee of future performance. Note the blue line, which is the exports of the eight other major exporters in the region, excluding Japan. Their exports have been falling steadily for some time now. None of them are up on a year-on-year -year basis. I don't see why China's performance should be any different. Looking at the U.S. Institute of Supply Management Index and its uh, sub-index for imports, the light blue line in this graph, it's been heading downward for some time. It's now below the 50 line that signals the difference between expansion and contraction. Now, if imports from one of the world's major importers are contracting, that's a bad sign for exports from Asia. In fact, globally, the amount of goods being traded in the world seems to have peaked. That's the yellow line in this graph. The value of global exports, the blue line, has plunged, no doubt because of the free fall in commodity prices but even the volume seems to have peaked in June, although it may be slowly recovering. Uh, this makes sense in a world where more and more of what consumers buy is digital and not physical. The Baltic Dry Freight Index, an index of the cost of chartering ships to carry dry freight, is at a record low. It's fallen every day so far this year. Just this year alone, it's down 16%, and that's after falling nearly 40% last year. Clearly, there's not much demand for ships to move things around the world with. And uh, it's not just in Asia. We saw earlier this week that manufacturing is contracting in the UK, while industrial output in the Eurozone is slowing, including in Germany, another major exporter. That's also a sign that demand for goods is slowing. In short, it seems unlikely to me that the Chinese data are actually signaling an end to the decline in global trade. No doubt there may well be a temporary bounce in risk sentiment, and the Australian dollar and New Zealand dollar may bounce temporarily, but I would expect any such bounce to simply offer a good opportunity to establish new short positions. I think we're still at the beginning of a secular downturn in global trade that has many more months, if not years, to run. The implications for that trend for EM countries, commodity exports, and for China are enormous. So too are the implications for the FX market. This is Marshall Giller, out of Investment Research at FX Primus. Get more market insights on our education pages and turn your trading ideas into action with FX Primus, the safest place to trade.